Charlie. Are you having fun over there? Charlie. Give me some matches. Matches? Here you are. Come in. It's about time you pulled yourself together, Charlie. Mrs. Wilson will be here in a quarter of an hour. I oh, know. Then can I put the lights on? No, you may not. Do you fully understand what we've done, Brandon? I understand what I've done. Yes. I understand quite well what I've done. I have done murder. Yes. I have committed murder. I have committed passionless, motiveless, faultless and clueless murder. Bloodless and noiseless murder. Yes. An immaculate murder, Charlie. I have killed for the sake of danger and for the sake of killing. I am alive. Truly and wonderfully alive. That's what I've done, Charlie. What's the matter? You're not getting superstitious, are you? No. I, I'm not superstitious. Good. Then you'll let me put on the light. No. Brandon. Yes? You remember when David came in? What do you mean when David came in? When David came in here. When he came out of the car. You were standing at the door, weren't you? Yes. Did you see someone standing there? About 70 yards further up the road? No. There was someone. There was a man. I've just remembered. So, so what have you remembered? Nothing. Doesn't matter. Brandon. What? You, you remember when David came out to the Odeon? When I met him and, and got him into the car? Why shouldn't have someone seen us there? Charlie, what do you mean by someone? Oh, someone, anyone. Did we think of that, Brandon? I did. And now it's in here. It, it, it's in the room. Do you think we'll get away with it? What, tonight? Yes. Charlie, are you suggesting that some psychic force emanating from this chest is going to reach out and advise Johnson that the remains of his 20-year-old son are contained in it? <laughs> Charlie, if you're feeling insecure, maybe I should give you a brief summary of the facts. Listen! What? Shut up and listen! <laughs> It's nothing. I thought it might be Mrs. Wilson. Mrs. Wilson is not due to come here until five tonight, Charlie. In bed. She's never punctual anyway. Besides, Mrs. Wilson does not have a key at the moment. Remember? We took it off her, so she will have to ring the bell. Let me give you a brief rundown today, Charlie. You are always looking somewhat confused. This afternoon, at about two o'clock, David Kenny, our fellow undergraduate, left his father's house with the intention of visiting the Odeon Hester Square. He did. And after the performance, he was met in the street by himself. He was invited to this house. Then he was given tea, and following that, at a quarter to seven, he was killed by being strangled with a rope. Following this, our friend David was placed in his chest, and tonight, his father, Sir Johnson Kenley, his aunt, Mrs. Debenham, and three well-chosen friends of our own will come round here for a gathering. They will exchange in the usual small talk, Charlie, and then they will leave. This party isn't a slip, is it, Brandon? Haven't we always said that the entire beauty of tonight lay in the party itself? We will leave for Oxford. We will carry our fellow undergraduate with us and he will never be heard of again. This is the perfect crime. The perfection of criminality. It is the complete story. I'm quite lucid, am I not? Yes. You see, Charlie, far from being our vulnerable work, the 
party is by far the most satisfying. Think about its ingredients. I still don't think we could have chosen better. First, and by all means foremost, there is Sir Johnston Kennedy, the father of the occupant of that chest. Well, Charlie, it's he, the father, who gives the whole macabre quality of the evening. Well chosen so far. We then, of course, require his wife. But she is ill, suffering from the flu, and will be unable to attend. However, David's aunt will be her replacement for the evening. Ten two. Mrs. Wilson will be here in five minutes. I know. Well, then may I put on the light? Do you have to? Can't you go on talking? Oh, Charlie, I can't do that. I'm afraid nobody feels really safe. 